We can't do it without our helper. God has his precious Holy Spirit on assignment to help us. So Lord, right now, we receive your help. We believe we receive your help. Unfold the word of God for us so that we can see our destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Connected part three. This has been so good and it's only gonna get better. In part one, we learned that when you're connected, connected to God, you light up. It lights up your true design, who you are, your identity. In part two, we saw that only God can occupy the number one place in our lives. Connected in the right order to him, builds us into his family, establishes every other order in our life, and once again, powers up our design. We saw the light light up. Now, in this segment of Connected, part three, let's talk about circuit breakers, short circuits and circuit breakers. Listen, I'm gonna really dial in on lonely because lonely is a byproduct of darkness, powerlessness, and emptiness. So I think this is important for you or somebody that you love and you want to minister to. Ephesians 1, starting at verse 18 and 19, it says this, I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being, may be enlightened, flooded with light. Did you hear that? God wants you lit from the inside out, flooded with light, glowing, not in the dark. When you answer the big questions in life, it brings a sense of fulfillment, identity, purpose, even direction in the midst of chaos, in the midst of the lonely and the distraught, light be, there it is. Feelings are a weak compass to live by. If your feelings are steering your life right now, you're headed for trouble, but I've got good news for you. If you've been feeling bounced around by the circumstances, worried and confused, or even just lonely, today is your day. We're together, not by accident. I don't believe that. God has plans to hook you up, to power you up. God wants you to know that your circumstances today are not the problem. The problem is being powerless. Your design, not being powered up, that's a problem. The ocean is never the problem until your ship is powerless and sinking, right? God's plan has always been to get you connected, connected to his power. So we got to get over these short circuits. Aren't you glad God wants to interrupt your trouble, replacing your darkness with light, his light? John 15, verse 7, Jesus said this. He said, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. The light bulb turns on when you remain in, when you're connected, when you turn into his word and you remain in his word and the message lives in your heart. Then Jesus said, you can ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. I spoke with a man just a few days ago and he said, well, I'm asking, but nothing's happening. And I asked him, I said, but are you vitally united to Christ? That means, can you tell me that you're really remaining in Jesus? His words remaining in you? You're meditating on his word? You see, if there's no power and the lights are off, God is not failing. God doesn't fail. He can't fail. You may have allowed a short circuit. So for the next few minutes, let me explain to you how you were designed to be connected and how connection affects your direction. Direction, in turn, amps up your protection. God tells us that it's not good to be alone. Look at Genesis 2, verse 18. Now the Lord God said, it's not good, sufficient, satisfactory. There's other translations that say profitable that the man should be alone, I will make him a helper. Well, we just prayed for help. For a helper suitable, adapted, complementary for him. God saw mankind alone and said, it's not good 
It's not profitable. God was saying it's not enough. God is always thinking more for you, not less, more. Thinking family. He's thinking completion. He's thinking multiplication for you. It's not good, though, to be alone. Or in other words, it's not profitable to be alone. Have you ever felt alone? I mean, really alone. The type of loneliness that standing in the middle of a crowd only exasperates and intensifies. Well, you're not the only one. Albert Einstein, great inventor, brilliant man, he said this, it is strange to be known so universally and yet to be so lonely. Ernest Hemingway, the great author, writer, said this, I live in a vacuum that is as lonely as a radio tube when the batteries are dead and there is no current to plug into. Ernest Hemingway, he committed suicide shortly after that. Marilyn Monroe said this, I think the only people who stay with me are the people I pay. Oh, that's sad. David, the psalmist, King David, the famous writer of the psalm, said this, Insults have broken my heart. I hoped for sympathy, but there was none. That's from Psalm 69, verse 20. Wow. And then J.K. Rowling, the famous author of the Harry Potter books, said that she used her own dark suicidal thoughts as the inspiration for the Dementor characters in her book. You're not alone, my friend. A lot of people, a lot of great successful people have felt alone. I could go on and on talking about famous, talented, gifted people and their loneliness, their isolated feelings that drive them to self-destruction. But all of that to say, you are not the only one. We've all had that experience of being in a crowd and feeling alone. Crowds are fickle things at best. The real question in life is this, what's your worth? Are you accepted? Are you rejected? Are you loved? Does your life really matter? Well, look at Hebrews 13 verse five. God's talking and he says, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, relax my hold on you, assuredly not. So we take comfort and are encouraged. My friend, you can't know true comfort until you truly know the reality of God never leaving you. He is the comforter. Elijah the prophet felt alone and super depressed. But was he really alone? You see, he believed a lie that he was alone. But was he really alone? I mean, we're talking, this is a prophet that angels were feeding him and trying to protect him from the sun, from the hot sun. When you're a child of God, you are his responsibility. He promises to watch over you. Think about this. God chose you, you for his family. Oh, that's so empowering. Ephesians 1 verses 4 and 5 says this. He chose us in Christ, actually picked us out for himself as his own. He picked you out, my friend, before the foundation of the world so that we would be holy. That is consecrated, set apart for him and blameless in his sight before him in love. He predestined and lovingly planned for us to be adopted to himself as his own children through Jesus Christ in accordance with the kind intention and good pleasure of his will. Now, let me tell you, that's connected. God chose you before the foundation of the world. God chose you to be connected. He didn't just make you, he chose you. God believes you're so very valuable that he wants to be connected to you. And nothing, nothing can break the power circuit like ignorance of that truth. Truth like who made you, why God made you, who you belong to, how valuable you truly are. There was a man named Viktor Serebakov. He was the son of Russian immigrants. 
and he was a dropout out of school and a failure at several job assignments. You see, his teacher had told him that he wasn't very bright. Victor, you're just not bright. You're kind of stupid, and your only hope is to get uh, a job working manual jobs that really don't require much thinking, just some real grunt work. So he lived that reality, believing it from a mentor for quite a while. And then when he was joining the army in World War II, he was asked to do a standardized IQ test and they were shocked to find that Victor tested out as high as their scale would even go. He was at least a 161 in his IQ, which is unbelievably brilliant, but he was at least 161, if not more. Victor was smart. He accepted a new reality that he was smart, very smart. And guess what? Suddenly he started making all these inventions and filing patents for his designs. Victor became the head of the Mensa Society, which is a famous organization for the smartest people in the world. Victor's life changed when he believed the truth, or at least some of the truth, about his value, at least his intellect, and it birthed a new reality in his life. In 2000, Blockbuster ruled the home entertainment world. Then along came this little organization called Netflix, a struggling online mail order company. Well, its CEO of Netflix offered to sell the company for 50 million. That seems like a lot of money, but Blockbuster just laughed them out of the building. No, get your little company out of here. Netflix got into streaming. People stopped renting DVDs. Blockbuster died and today, Netflix is valued at over 192 billion. That's billion with a B. Someone was ignorant of the value, the seeds of the future. Humanity has a track record for not recognizing real intrinsic value. But God loves you and he recognizes your value, my friend. He chose you even in your lowest moment. Loneliness is not about being alone. It's, it's about not feeling recognized, valued, worthy. Can I bring you back to our light illustration? Nothing lights your worth but God's power. Let's take a look at this again. Lonely is not good. Lonely is not being alone. Lonely comes from not being lit. That just even looks lonely, doesn't it? This glass is just liquid sand. The Lord formed our bodies from the dust of the ground. But the glass, this glass part is not you. you not, your height, your weight, your money, your skin color, your sexuality, your age, your education, your intellect, your job, it's all just, it's just part of the glass. You were made in God's image and no other identity will light your design. Therefore, we could stand you in a crowd of a million people and flood you with all kinds of affirmation, and it still won't light you up and chase away the lonely. And don't buy the lie that you're the only one or that there's just something wrong with your design, there's something wrong with your glass. Don't you know that often great leaders fight overwhelming feelings of lonely? Many world leaders have struggled with clinical depression and loneliness. But until we turn into God, into his truth, that's what lights our design. That's how God answers lonely, even at a leadership level. Look at Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or tremble and dread before them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you. He will not fail you or abandon you. God will not fail you. People fail people. Even good people fail to recognize the reality of God's intrinsic value that he's placed in you and on you. Be strong in God, not in yourself. Loneliness is a war strategy the enemy uses against humanity, against you, against us. You see, the devil's plan is to divide and conquer, circuit, 
circuit break your power supply. That's what he wants to do. Get your power off. First Peter 5 verse 8 says that the devil is seeking whom he may devour. Well, who is that? The disconnected from power. The devil has no defense against light. He cannot handle God's power. He needs you in the off position. There are circuit breakers in life that shut the power off and make you vulnerable to the dark, like ignorance. Not knowing the truth is not an excuse. Hosea 4, 6 says, your lights are out. Pride, it isolates you from the power. Second Chronicles 7, verse 14, God said, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves, it's the antidote to pride, then offense. Offense insulates you from the truth. Psalm 119, verse 165 says, those who love thy law, nothing offends them. How about this one? Here's another short circuit, sowing discord. Sowing discord among the brethren. Proverbs 6, verse 19 says, God hates this act. Why? Because it's a circuit breaker for your life. Here's another one, false belief. Believing lies instantly breaks the circuit. You know what? Israel, the whole nation, they believed a lie about themselves. When the 12 spies came back, they believed the 10 spies, and it says they had a grasshopper mentality because it said, we're like grasshoppers in the enemy's eyes. So they bought into it. They believed a lie, a false belief, and it completely shut down their circuitry. How about this one? Wrong relationships. Nothing brings on lonely like circuit-breaking relationships. Parents, think about your children. You want the best for them. God wants the best for you. Please don't blame power failure on God. He doesn't fail. It's not his will that your light is ever out. If you accept responsibility for your dark, you're lost and you're lonely, you can quickly eliminate the circuit breakers. Ephesians 1 verses 18 and 19. Paul prayed this, he said, I pray that the eyes of your heart, the very center and core of your being may be enlightened, flooded with light by the Holy Spirit, so that you will know and cherish the hope, the divine guarantee, the confident expectation to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, God's people, and so that you will begin to know what the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his what? Power is where? In us. In us who believe. You got to stop the short circuit and turn the loneliness around to work for you. You can do that. Let the emptiness, the loneliness trigger you to go back to Jesus, to turn back to Jesus. Don't waste a good old fashioned, sad, lonely, desperate feeling. Use them to fuel you today. Your story is being written. You're going to be an amazing blessing to so many people. That's right. You have something so valuable to give to others. Abraham Lincoln once said this. He said, to ease another's heartache is to forget one's own. That's an excellent quote. Never forget this. When you give, you really live. Like gifts, lonely contracts and dissolves. Martin Luther King Jr. said this, life's most urgent question is, what are you doing for others? Don't run from loneliness. Use it to trigger your pursuit to be like Jesus. He loves you. You can trust a Savior who willingly died for you even when you still didn't know him. Hebrews 12, starting at verse 2 looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. He, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured. I love that. Just think of Jesus who endured. Let loneliness trigger you to reconnect with God the Father. In his presence is joy. Let loneliness trigger you into the act of giving. God so loved that he gave, and since you know you are forever connected to God the Father, the great giver, imitate him. Act like God. Give of yourself. 
Ephesians 5 says this, therefore be imitators of God, copy him, follow his example, as well-beloved children imitate their father. Isn't that true? Don't, isn't that what children do? They imitate their father. And then it says in verse two, and walk in love, esteeming and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet fragrance. My friend, you have permission to imitate God with his help. This culture is always on the take, me, my, I. It's, it's all about what I get or I take. But that's not truly living connected. People who live immoral and promiscuous are some of the most lonely, confused, and disconnected people on planet Earth. Physical connection without spiritual and emotional connection, sanctioned by God, approved by your maker, that's a death sentence. That's a lonely death sentence. Here's some of God's wisdom on how to bypass short circuits and apply connection over these next few days in your lives. You can do this. Number one, you've got to set your mind. Set your mind. Your mind is a gift from God, but it will work against you if you don't master it. Colossians 3.2 says, set your mind and keep it set on what's above. Philippians 4.8 says, whatever's true, honorable, just, pure, lovely, good report, if there's any excellence or praise, worthy, think on these things. You do it. You think on these things. We have daily prayers, weekly encouragements in your email box, Tuesday talks. It's all the word of God sent to help you connect with God the Father. His power, it's powerful, but I can't eat the food for you. I can serve it, but you got to eat it. Then number two, eliminate the unnecessary. Eliminate the unnecessary. You see, there are connections that you have right now that are making you feel more disconnected, more alone, more sad. People pray about these bad connections for a lifetime and go to their grave sad, mad. Don't do that. The Bible says Lot Remember Lot, that was Abraham's nephew? Lot, living among them, tortured his own righteous soul every day with what he saw and heard. That's from 2 Peter 2, verse 8. Unnecessary activity, busyness, criticism, complaining, unhealthy relationships. You need to disconnect from that stuff. And then number three, this is going to sound a little bit strange, but listen to me. Cry upward. Cry upward. Psalm 40, verses 1 and 3 says this, I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me, and then listen, and he heard my cry, cried unto God. He also brought me up out of a horrible pit. He established my steps. He's put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will trust in the Lord when they see it. Hey, if a guy who is considered one of the most amazing warriors and kings in all of humanity cries, then we know real men cry. Just face the right direction. Cry upward to God. Cry upward and that will work for you and help reconnect you. And then number four, this is an awesome connection strategy. Give. Number four, give. If you really want to overcome loneliness and be connected, learn the art of giving. Living is giving. Light gives. Love gives. Period. It's darkness that teaches this vacuum style of existence. Give me, give me. Just kind of shrinking to themselves. Jesus gives us his life but it's in exchange for our life. We have to give him our life. Then we can imitate God and shine out our light. What's that mean? To give, to help. What's it look like? Forgive your sister, forgive your ex, help your mom, give your neighbor a smile, send a cheerful text, phone someone in a nursing home, give somebody a job, give your attention, give your focus, give your resources, give your best. With God's guidance, give strategically, not randomly, but in obedience to his power, his love, his connection, his direction. Today, let's resolve your short circuit problems. 
there's a world of difference between self-isolating and spiritually isolating, right? Physical isolation is about having your liquid sand, your glass, separated. That's physical. But spiritual isolation is about the absence of power. No light, dark, disconnected, troubled, alone. You are designed to be part of the family of God. That's the body, the assembly of Christ. If you're spiritually isolated, you're disconnected from God's plan, his family. Even God can't protect you when you're spiritually isolated. You're outside of his plan, his will. 1 Peter 5 verses 6 and 7 tells us to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. God exalting you is him lighting you up. To humble is to let go and submit to turn into his power. Get the circuit breakers out. If you find yourself going dark, contracting, don't let fear counsel you. Let love guide you. God wants to give you his life power, but you've got to give him you, all your emptiness. Love gives, love dares to reach out. God has given us the family light, the family DNA in Jesus' blood, the family name, the family code of conduct. We have the family will and testament now in effect. You and I overcome by the blood, the DNA of the lamb and the word, our confession of our testimony. The most connected and protected place to be in all of eternity is in the family of God, under his name, confessing to his bloodline and no other. That's, that's our identity. Drop the circuit breakers, get connected to Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Defeat lonely, sad, and the darkness right now by receiving God's power supply, a lasting supply, not just a one-time power up and we'll see if your light works, but you need to be the light. God's called you to be, to stay on, to stay plugged in. Let his power reside on the inside of you. Pray with me, dear Lord Jesus, I want that. I want to live in the light, powered up from the inside out, always with you in my heart. You died on the cross for me. God raised you up from the grave. I receive your forgiveness. I receive God's love. I'm not alone. I belong in the family of God. I'm born again with this new identity. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.